This is a short video on basic math and trade related problems. We're looking at some problems that we need to solve in the field. Our first problem is a problem regarding clevis hangers. A plumbing apprentice can install 15 clevis hangers per hour. At this rate, how many clevis hangers could three apprentices install in two days if they work nine hours per day? This is how we figure it out. So we got the 15 clevis hangers per hour for one apprentice. We got the three apprentices. We have the two days and we have the nine hours per day. So that would be 15 times three times two times nine, which would give us grand total of 810 clevis hangers that three apprentices could install over two days at nine hours each. Now here's another problem. We have a countertop that we have to divide into five equal sections. So we have a 85 and three quarter inch countertop that must be divided into five equal sections. We have to find the length of each section. So again, we have 85 and three quarters inch countertop we need to get five equal sections. We take 85 and three quarter inches and divide it by five, which works out to 17 and one eighth inch per section. Here's a timely one, copper pipe. We're gonna get copper pipe. We need to uh, find out what our costs are gonna be. So we find out a length of copper pipe will cost us $24.55. We need to find out what the cost of 19 and a half lengths. We only need 19 and a half. So we need to figure out what 19 and a half will cost us. So again, a length of pipe costs $24 and 55 cents. And we need only 19 and a half lengths. So we take the 24.55 times it by 19 and a half. which results in a cost of $478.73 for 19 and a half lengths at a cost of $24.55 per length, full length. So again, $478.73. Now we're moving on to purchasing our fittings. We find out that 44 90 degree elbows will cost us $29.45. 11 T's will cost us $22.66. But we need to find out is what 31 90 degree elbows will cost us along with 11 T's of the same type. So we got $29.44 for 44 elbows. And we have $22.66 for 18 T's. So to find the cost for one elbow, we take the 29.45 and divide it by 44. This results in a individual cost of elbow of 67 cents. We need 31. So 31 times the 67 cents gives us a grand total of $20.77. Cost of one T Take the $22.66 and divide it by 18. We find out that one T will cost us $1.26. We need 11, so we times 11 times the $1.26 to find out that it will cost us $13.86 for 11 Ts. We can now add those two totals together, the 277 and the 1386 together to find out the grand total costs for us will be $34.63. Okay, it's time to uh, figure out some missing measurements here using the measurements on the drawing. We have a piece of pipe that's wrapping around a wall, doing a trammel, and then going back around the wall down the other side there. So to find A, we take our known length of 100 and 87, which covers A and a bit more. Then we subtract 8, which is part of that overall measure that we're trying to get rid of to get down to A, 
And then we take away 19, which is another part of the overall measurement we're trying to do to get down to A. So A would equal 160. B, we take the 247 down the side, which encompasses B, and we subtract the two measurements. And again, they're both going to be A and 19. They correspond on this side of the wall as well, which will then give us a grand total of 220 inches for B. Rolling offset time. Rolling offset time. So we have a rolling offset. We have an overall dimension of a piece of pipe that goes from the wall all the way to the other wall of 135. Our first piece of pipe from the wall to the 45 has been determined to be 25 inches. We have to find the center to center of the travel, and then we have to find the center to the end or to the wall of the missing pipe. We've been given our rise and roll numbers, and they're given in two different measurements for each one. We have the 19 inches from the wall coming down, coming from that same wall from the top, coming down to seven. We have to subtract those two. Then from coming from the left to right, from the left over to the first center of the first hole, 25 inches, from the left over to the center of the second hole, 39 inches. So we have to subtract those two. So find the true offset as always. We have to find the, sorry, find the roll, rolling offset. We have to find the true offset first. True offset equals rise square plus roll square, all square rooted. So first of all, we have to get our rise and roll numbers determined. So we have 19 minus the seven, which gives us 12 inches for the rise. The roll, we take 39 minus 25, and that gives us a roll of 14. Now we can place the numbers into the equation. Again, true offset equals rise squared plus roll squared, all squared rooted. We got 12 squared plus 14 squared added together and then square rooted. 12 squared is 140, sorry, 144, and 14 squared is 196. We have those numbers together, we get 340. We find the square root of 340 and it equals 18 and 17 sixteenths for our true offset. Finding our advance. Finding our advance, we have to know the true offset. And by knowing that, we know that they're equal to each other because they're both in the 45 degree. We're using 45 degrees, that means that our advance and our true offset are the same. So that means our advance would be also 18 and 17, sorry, 18 and 7 16 inches. Now we gotta find the missing length of pipe A. We take the 135 overall from wall to wall. We subtract the 25. And then we subtract our advance, which is 18 and 7 16 inches, to find out the pipe A would be 91 and 9 16 inches end to center. Trying to find a couple of missing pipe dimensions again, now using a looking at a drawing of a washroom. Again, given a bunch of measurements around the outside, trying to find the missing pipes. So pipe A is on a 45 degree. Or we know both 45 degrees, that's our travel. If we know our offset or advance, we can times it by 1.414. So our A, which is our travel, would equal then 28 inches, which could be considered the offset or the advance, which is located on the left-hand side of the drawing, and then times it by 1.414, which will give us the center to center of A. The center to center of A is 39 and 9 16 inches. To find B, B, we would take the 28 inches going from the open circle along the dot, 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 dash line for B, adding in the 25, and then adding in 20 divided by 2, because that pipe stops halfway in between the 20. So in other words, it's 10. So 28 inches plus 25 plus 10 inches, which would give us an answer of, for B of 63 inches. Our last problem is regarding a layout of a um, lavatory um, in a domestic washing or sorry, a public wash. 
So what we do is we're trying to prepare the layout. A bunch of sinks being dropped in. Uh, what they want us to have here is an even mount between labs from the edge of the countertop to a lab. There should be an even amount of space between the front edge of the countertop and the front of the lab, and that the same amount of space between the back of the lab to the back edge of the countertop. So on this drawing here, it breaks down what they're looking for. So we have the A, this is the equal space between from the left edge to the first laboratory, from the first laboratory over the second laboratory, the, the right-hand side of the second laboratory over the left-hand side of the third laboratory, and the right-hand side of the third laboratory over to the right-hand side of the counter. All those spaces are represented by A, and they all have to be exactly equal to each other. That's what they're trying to ask us to find. The other thing that they want us to do is to maintain the space at the front of the laboratory, so from the front of the counter to the front of the lab, as well as from the back of the lab to the back of the counter. And those are represented by the Bs on the drawing. So why does it have equal space in the front and the back of the laboratory? Also, we're going to have to find out what the, the uh, edge to center measurements are. So if edge to center first lab, edge to center of second lab, and an edge to center of third lab. What we need to do is find out what our laboratory is, our width and our depth. And our width is represented by the X and the L represents our depth of our laboratory. So again, what we're looking for is A. And A is the amount of space between, going from left to right, between the countertop and the lab, between the first and second lab, between the second and third lab, and then of course from the third lab over to the right hand edge. We're looking for B, the amount of space that's in front of the lab to the edge of the counter, and then behind the lab to the edge of the counter, again, being equal to each other. And then again, we're trying to find the three um, left to center measurements. So C1 is from left to center of the first sink. C2 is the left to the center of the second sink. And C3 is the left to the center of the third sink. And again, that added in the X and Y on the uh, laboratory down below. That enters again, X is the width, L is the depth. And they'll form part of our equation. So to find our A, we need to know the overall length, which is represented by L, and subtract three X's, which represent three, the widths of three laboratories. Once we do that, we divide by four, which will give us the four equal spaces for the A's. So there is four of them. Looking for B, B, we need to take the D, the depth of the counter, and then subtract the depth of the laboratory. And because we're going to have two spaces, one at the front, one at the back, we're going to divide it by two to find out what the B is going to be. And both of them, and of course, they're equal to each other. Exactly. To find C1, this is one way of finding it. We take the A dimension on the left-hand side, and we add half of X or X divided by two because we have an A and then we have half of X, which will give us our first left to center measure. Up next, we have C2. C2 would be A plus X plus A and then uh, half of X again because C2 is goes to here. So we have half of X, we have an A, we have an X and then we have an A. C3, C3 is A plus X plus A plus X plus A, and then plus half of X. And again, starting from the right-hand side, we have half of X and A and X and A and X and then A. And once again, there is a couple of different ways of finding this one out. Uh, this is just one way. And that concludes our video on learning how to do some problems, trade problems.